and we are live with our first episode of season two, Back Pass X Ballistic Khalsa, in a very intimate surrounding, new studio. We're not in our homes anymore. We are in Topayo Stadium now. Look at that, Ballistic Khalsa represent behind the logo. Peter, scoot a bit. Oh, yeah. Wrong side. All right, there you go, the logo. Ballistic Khalsa's logo proudly emblazoned on the wall. And it's me, Ras. And uh, Mr. Kel. Yes, really, really happy to be back uh, with the big man, of course, uh, Peter. Uh, but before we start the, the, the whole show, just going to ask Peter, I'm not sure if everyone saw this um, post that was, if you can see, the post that came out on Ballestia's um, um, social media. It looked like you, you, you did something wrong or it's like someone was staring at you. Or, can you tell me more about this picture? No, no, I, I noticed that as well, and it looks like... Uh, Who is this player, by the way? He's a trialist. Oh, he's a trialist. He was did, a did he get picked? And, and, um, no, but he didn't know that at the time, so... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has a chance, do do check out Ballestia's uh, social media page. And, uh, yo, this guy, whoever you are, do reach out to us. I'll be very, very happy to uh, to speak with you. Maybe we'll invite you to the show as well. Um, so very, very happy to have you, Peter. Second season. Um, are you excited? Uh, yes, I am. Excited and, uh, to be on the show? Uh, excited to be on the show, obviously, but um, I think um, you, 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 you meant exciting for the, for the new season as well. And um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm happy that we started and, and uh, uh, we have two more weeks to go. And um, uh, yeah, really excited for, for the first games to, to start. Yeah. Okay, Peter, got to ask you a bit. What were you up to? since the season ended in Singapore's winter? Uh, yeah. Winter break. <laughs> um, no, I, um, I, I haven't been back to, uh, to Holland for a while, so I spent uh, two weeks in Europe. So I think I spent the first... During the World Cup, I was still here. I did some, some TV stuff in, in Malaysia. Mm. Or, or, and uh, then I went for, um, I think, two weeks to Europe. And then I came back, uh, back into work. But even in December, obviously, when... 10, 11 players are leaving and the job is not, uh, not, not done yet. Not done. Actually, mm. uh, it reminded me of, uh, of Holland where I was technical director and I thought to be smart um, to uh, take uh, the same month off as the players. And, um, yeah. and my wife still regrets that, <laughs> me being away five hours, a, 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 five, five hours a day in a hotel in, uh, in, uh, in, in Greece. Okay. Uh, Luckily, it wasn't that bad, but uh, yeah, obviously, it's still uh, a lot needed to be done. Yeah. yeah. All right, we get to questions now. So let's jump straight into the squad selection. I think everyone wants to know, um, this is how we actually started off last season as well when we spoke to the previous coach and we asked him uh, about his thought process uh, on, on his squad selection. So uh, what changes... Um, I know you had a few games, only a like, handful of games last season, but I think you had a clear picture of what you needed to do um, to, to, to the team after the season. So um, what changes you feel that you really needed to make or needed to do um, to, to the team? Uh, there is obviously always you need to find a balance to, um, to what you want and, um, and the restrictions obviously that there are within a club in terms of, of budget. And, and um, you know who's running out of contract, who not. Um, and, and but what, when I came, I did notice that there was um, yeah the balance in the squad was not uh, not too well in terms of uh, experience and young players, uh, left footers. Uh, for instance, there was no left uh, central defender, a left footer. I know. I remember Iggy Iggy playing at left left centre back when you played him, Lion City. But to, to be honest, that was not only because of lack of central defenders. Um, it's it's also has to do with the way I want to play, and in training, um, Iggy at the time was not uh, Iggy was not a starter. But in training, I noticed that he was one of the best players on the ball. Um, so I thought there was no harm in actually giving him an opportunity when the, when the, when the chance was there. So that was also that was not only because of the circumstances. I also needed uh, a footballer there, and uh, I think. We, we, that, that's what we left. Also, when we had we had Amir out at the time, mm -hmm. I think we had a few injuries. Uh, I think Dell was not fit. Right. Um, um, Bruno got injured in his first game. Right. 
Um, so um, yeah, so the, the, and and look, uh, but to come back to your question, uh, uh, the balance in score, I didn't think we had an out and out number six, uh, so that was for me a very important one. And then, then you look at your playing style, and, and you look uh, in every position, do we have the right profile? Mm -hmm. I didn't think we did. Um, and then obviously you go through the games and you see, okay, um, we start more or less uh, trying to play. Uh, the way that I would like them to play. Mm -hmm. We start scoring much more goals than before, um, but we also concede a lot, a lot. I mean, with the amount of goals we scored in the in the last uh, two months or since I was there, it was almost three goals on average. Right, right. In the other league, um, you ended in top top four, but we also leaked a lot of goals. Right. Um, yeah. And that was not only because our, our defense, because defending starts up front, right. it was also because we had too many unnecessary turnovers. And it was also that uh, at times that we won the ball, we gave it away too, too quick. Yeah. So it, it, that is not only a defensive problem, it's actually uh, uh, defending starts up front, right. but also it's a problem that starts when you lose the ball in transition and, and a few other things. So I think we're more, much more balanced and I think we're a little bit more consistent on the ball. Right. And, and, and probably um, what I'm aiming for is that we, in the end, mm -hmm. when we reach peaks in games, um, there's always lows in games. And mm -hmm. the difference between the peak and the low was way too big. Okay. Uh, and, and that needs to change, otherwise you're not going to win games. Uh, yeah. you, you always have a bad period during a game right. or, or play a bad game, but you can't go from here to here. Right. If we right. can make that here, it's going to be a hell of a difference for sure. But it was, uh, I think, some games last season, Russ, I think was highly, highly entertaining. Everybody was at the edge of their seat. I remember the, the third and fourth placing against Elbrex. Um we were literally at Jalan Basar Stadium uh, screaming our heads off, um, but very, very entertaining. And I got to say, after you took over, the team um, actually got settled and they, they had an identity. They knew what they were doing. Um, so I'm very curious to know, how did you decide on... Wait, before that. Yeah. Oh, there is, there is a, question? there's a question, sorry. Um, by John, will DG7 score more goals this upcoming season? DG7, Mr. Daniel Go. Yeah. Did he take the number seven number or was he number seven? Yeah, he's, he's number seven, DG7. So, uh, Peter, I think this question is for you. Yeah, but I need to break in here. I'll read some other questions. Yeah. <laughs> the other questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, I got, I, got, I got to come back for that. Yeah. Answer this, uh, then we go to that. No, we don't. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, so DG7, all the best. Uh, I, I hope you score a lot of goals. But Madhu, to answer your question, where is uh, the coach's cap? He actually brought me his cap, I think. Uh, you know, I'm actually wearing his cap. Show it, show it. You gotta show the cap, man. This cap, bro. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Represent. Yeah, at Balesa Khalsa. So, Hyrule, he didn't lose his cap. He just, uh, he just uh, pinjam it to me for a bit, huh? <laughs> Funny enough, when I um, put my cap on the on on the, on the, um, uh, on the stand there and and go sit here without a cap, I knew there would come a remark from the cap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. no, I'm not really surprised. No. So, uh, so are they going to run extra laps tomorrow? Um, no, I am. Mean, these are not split second decisions. Uh, sorry, split second second uh, decisions. So I'm asleep for now. Sleep on that, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow you wake up, you will like. Sure. You will, uh, good luck, Madhu and uh, Hyrule. Uh, wish you all the best. Do do keep us posted what happened. Um, but coming back to my thank you for your questions. But coming back to my question, um, Peter, um, how did you decide on um, you know the players to keep? And also the new players coming in. I know there were plenty of players. Uh, you know, I think there were trialists as well. We spoke about some people coming in on trial. Um, the, the one, the poster. You see, he didn't get selected. He gave you a death stare. Um, you know, you got local talent coming in, foreign talent coming in. How did you, how did you decide? What, what was your, what was your, you know, um, thought yeah. process? That sounds maybe a little bit um, too technical, but, but you're constantly making almost like a swap analysis of your squad, right. and, and and you know where you need to, where your chances are, where you need to improve, right. and then you look per a position, uh, the profile that you have, and you think is that moving forward, is that going to be good enough? And um, 
And then, if you can find that replacement, is that replacement going to be better or not? Right. Because before you decide to maybe part ways with the players, you've got to have an alternative that uh, is affordable for the club as well. Um, That's so, a financial consideration. That's an uh, economical yeah, as well. I, consideration I think, as well, right? Uh, um, I think it's it's a it's a mix of, of all of that. Um, in, in the end, we are not at, uh, at Man United or Man City, so. Um, Man City might be in trouble, though. <laughs> so we need to be creative and do the best within our means as well. And, and, um, um, and but I'm happy with um, with um, how the club has, has handled uh, the things in December and still, and uh, the way we communicated and, and made uh, made decisions on on, uh, on incoming and outgoing players. So. Uh, no complaint for me there at all. Uh, I have a lot of faith uh, in, in the boys that we have. Um, um, and, and like I said, uh, in answer to your first question, I'm yeah. really looking forward to, to the start of the season. Right, right. I noticed you kept the, the core uh, of the team, you know, uh, players like Madhu, Wailun. Um, then you got Daniel Go, who had a who had a very good last part of the season. Um, Jumbo, the spine is there uh, of the team, so kept the core players, and then you added some quality players. Uh, I think Allen coming in, and also Sugita from Elbrex. I think he's a really lively uh, winger. Um, I think can play in multiple position as well, and then some local talents uh, coming in, uh, Fabian. And also Emric. Uh, we have seen Emric play uh, since, yeah. since we were since we were young. Um, talk to me about the try list that, that was that came in and and decided to you know try out for Balestra uh, Khalsa. Uh, did you, you yeah. Them, yeah? Did you did you uh, how how did you find them or did any of them get picked uh, try list? Um, well, some of them we made a decision already uh, on um, before we left uh, to Malaysia the week before and. Um, um, and there's at the moment two that we um, seriously con consider, and, um, and and again, then you look at um, uh, what we have, how, uh, where are we in terms of um, having positions uh, double, um, where we, you know, what happens if, you know, um, let's say um, a right fullback gets injured, how can how do we solve that? How do we solve when Alan gets injured? Right, um, and. Um, uh, and obviously, um, last year, um, we had Daniel as our under-23 player. Oh. That is not this year the case, so that's right. also something we need to keep in mind. Right. That's also why we had a few uh, trialists. We also had trialists, actually. I wouldn't call them trialists, but right. um, young talent. From young talent, okay. Uh, training with us. And mm. That's good. There's some very exciting uh, uh, players coming through as right. well. Yeah. So, um, oh, questions, questions. questions, questions time again. Lingish. Lingish, nice to have you back here again. Hi guys, sorry, don't know, but I guess the fixtures will be like last season. Now there's more time to plan. Are there good rest periods for players planned? Will they be doing other stuff like meeting fans at games during rest periods? That's an interesting question. But I think this season, there won't be four rounds. I think it's only three rounds, if I'm not wrong. So it's only three rounds uh, uh, played. Um, good rest periods planned for players. I obviously, um, the first one uh, is I think FIFA window. Where, um, obviously, um, we have ten days, uh, uh, ten days uh, of, of a window, and, and our players probably will get a few days there as well because the, the season will be long. We've been working hard, so uh, whenever there's a moment where. I think, or we think, that it's good to, to give them a few days. We will do because, you know, you gotta make sure that um, in December and or, or sorry, obviously we have two sorts of competition. We have the cup, mm -hmm. and and uh, August September is the finish of the season. That's where you need to be peak in terms of uh, freshness and, and and fitness. So you also need to be. So if you, if you keep on training and playing, you'll yeah. be fit but not fresh. So yeah. you need to use fatigue might, might come into play as well. Yes, yeah. you are fit, yeah. but um, also fatigued. And that's yeah. where it's probably the biggest enemy for injuries. 100%. Fatigues. And then uh, in, a, in a time where um, basically the prices are being given away. Uh, right. Um, so we need to look very careful of where we can rest them. Uh, right. For sure. Yeah. Right. Also, I think there's a rest period for during the Ramadan as well. 
Yeah. I believe so. Right. At the moment, I, I look at the schedule, I can see the schedule just to my left here. And there's lots of, uh, it's a chock a block until the Ramadan period. Right. So matches back to back almost. And then Ramadan period is about one month or so of break. And yeah. then you they restart again. So a bit like European football where they had, you know, back to back games and then they had a break for World Cup. And then now it's the same chock a block kind of fixture. So. That's what's few, happening, yeah. Mid, as well. ah. right, right. So very interesting. Going to Brunei as well this season. Uh, Brunei DPMM uh, is back. Um, oh, another comments another in. comment coming in, guys. John Tan heard rumors of Daniel going to LCS. Um, uh, I don't know where you heard that rumor, but uh, and would would be a national call up. would be a national called up if he went there. Not necessary. Uh, we had Wailun called up uh, last season yeah. playing for us. So not necessarily you need to play for LCS um, to um, be called up for a national team. Any comments on the rumour on Daniel Go going to LCS? Nah, I don't think that's actually a secret. There was interest from the club. Right. Uh, I believe there was even an, uh, right. an offer. Wow. Was, uh, uh, in the end, not taken up by, uh, by Daniel. He wanted to stay. He still had, was on the contract. Right. To be honest, uh, I think uh, in relation to the national team, that's probably the best decision he, uh, he could have made. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. You got Daniel. Good. Good for you, Daniel. And uh, yep, Han Hua. Yes. Actually, his cap is on the table there, but like uh, I actually wore the cap. Uh, uh, this, this is a very good. Uh, I think so, people really notice you without yeah, the yeah. cap. Yeah. No, no, I really, I, Peter, I'm not forgetting this. This is started by Madhu and uh, and Haru. <laughs> this guy just jumps on the bandwagon. Like, uh, <laughs> actually, I want to say one one thing. I was already planning that he'll appear in the cap, okay. so I was going to ask him about the cap. Okay. But he he but tricked in me. In your show, I never had a cap. Yes, on yet. actually, I too. I never had that. I never noticed that. I never noticed that, but I know you always, almost always had a cap on. So I was like thinking, okay, he's going to be in the cap. I'm going to introduce him as the Jason Statham uh, <laughs> lookalike, stun double, stun double, one of the players of the last players season, yeah. yeah Which is true. I think it stuck with me in my yeah. mind that, you yeah. know, he's like an action hero. Yeah. He's sitting next to a Hollywood action <laughs> hero. And there was also, uh, I think last season, he, he was modeling some. Yes, boss, 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 or yeah, yeah boss, boss that, apparel as well. It was modeling. I told him, I told him uh, off, off uh, camera. I told him, you know that. Boys, let's raise the level again. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can be a model. <laughs> 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 just, uh, let's just get on. Let's let's get on. Okay, football talk. Football talk. Okay, football. Uh, we have Michael here. Michael Link. Thank you for your question, Peter. Do you think with the players you have at your disposal, do you think you can bring them to a level similar like what Potter, Graham Potter? Um, did with Brighton finding and unearthing talents? I, you know, um, I always hate to, 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 to jump a little bit ahead of, of, of things. What I want to say is that I have a lot of belief in this group. Okay. I think that it's better balance and we have more quality and consistency in the group. Um, so we have a chance to be much more uh, competitive. We were already competitive to, towards the end with, uh, with the top teams. Now we gotta make sure that we um, that we keep that uh, that consistency and and and, and uh, especially with in games we have dominated uh, parts of games against top teams. Yeah, right. Uh, but um, I think we need to win those games. We need to dominate longer periods. I think we have the quality to do that. Uh, and and um, this group and, and and they know and I've said that last week in KL as well. As long as they uh, come. Uh, to train right. and are prepared to challenge each other every single day and themselves and not afraid to hurt them, they can achieve much more than they actually think they can. Right, right. That's so true. That's that's very, very true. Um, we have an very interesting. Okay, we have another one. This one, you need to have a, a, a good one. Peter, what's your view on the VAR introduced this season? Will it improve the game? Uh, pros and cons of VAR. So l let's just say, what are your views on the VAR coming to ASLIC um, this season? I'm definitely not uh, not against VAR. It makes um, football probably a little bit more, um, but, but there's a lot of downsides to it as well. And and I, I think in every competition where it has been introduced, the first year was more yeah. than a disaster. And I remember Australia. Yeah. Um, so there will be some hiccups. 
um, but look, uh, I think it's also probably a um, um, something we, we, we can't move away from. Either. Right. Um, so um, I think we just uh, have to move along, uh, or sorry, uh, go along with it. But uh, I hope that it doesn't end up in, in massive, massive stoppages during games. And Correct. As yeah. players, and, and especially in the way we want to play, um, we need the ball to be in play. We need momentum. Right. Uh, so I hope uh, it's not going to be uh, affecting uh, uh, the momentum and, and, and create stop-start games. Yeah. I mean, uh, it is good whereby there were a lot of uh, decisions that there was a bit dubious. dubious last season when you see the goals and all going, so it's good for the game. But like what you said, will it result to stoppages in the game, long stoppages? So it doesn't make sense uh, for, for that and hope they make correct decisions. Um, on Sunday, we play against Albert X, and I think they're going to do the first test with it. So. Right. Well, that that that'll be a very very um, interesting um, game to watch with the with the VAR. Okay, Lingesh is here again. Um, sorry, don't know if this is confidential. No problem. Let's just ask this question. But there are, but are there any players missed in the transfer window that Peter wanted? So, oh, he just said nice polo tee, Peter. Uh, is that under the merch? Yes, please contact um, Darwin, uh, and uh, he will sort you out. Um, but yeah, so any players uh, you felt that you missed during this transfer window? Um, no, I, I don't know if, if the word miss is, is appropriate. Or any players that you wanted, like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that weren't available? But look, uh, no, and, and, and sometimes were available, but right. we couldn't afford them. So, right, right. Um, so we have to go to number two in that spot. Uh, so and, and there, obviously, I, I won't mention any names. Right. Because, but, uh, Tell us off camera. Off camera. Um, so no, not not every player that you want is always a hit, and that, that is for various reasons. Um, I can say that that I have been talking to a, to a Dutch player. And, right. Um, he actually ended up to go go to my old uh, club um, in in Holland instead of here. Okay. Um, but it had to do with um, also with with uh, in, in uh, with with his family more. Right. Right. So, right. So, yeah. Um, Sometimes the play is just uh, too expensive, and then we go to the to the next one. It's as right. simple as that. You need to have a list of players that Correct. you want, and you go from one to two to three. That's that's uh, that's a good way to put it. Um, John, why BK didn't mention uh, what? Okay, why Ballistic Khalsa FC's Facebook page didn't mention the scorers against armed forces? Who's the scorer? If you don't mind sharing. So, John, I'm not sure if you like place the bet or something like that, uh, but. Um, Maybe you did. Daniel go score by any chance? Like that? That who scored? Even Peter didn't didn't keep count. Last two. Right, right. So John, to answer your question, Daniel go scored two. Massa scored two. Massa scored two. Yeah. Okay. And two more. Let me think. Uh, I think Jumbo scored one. Jumbo, Jumbo scored, scored one, one. okay. Yeah, Alan, free, free kick, kick. Okay. okay. So that's six. Okay, so that answers your question, John. And Yase, our friend. Yase, my man. Happy to see you guys back. Yes, we are very happy to be back as well in a new setting. Yep, so certainly pleased to be here. Over to you, Kel. So yes, um, coming back to my, to my questions here. Do you feel that the players you have right now I think uh, we've been talking a lot about new players, but the players, the new players like Ellen, uh, you know, Sugita, Fabian, Americ, they complement what you already have um, in your current squad. Um, not only complement, I think that also adds something that we didn't have. So they better your squad now. Uh, yeah, one person. Okay. So that's that's pretty good. Are you now? Are you confident that you have a team right now? You have a good team. Uh, at your disposal, uh, these are the players you feel that yes, I can work with them, and you know this is this is for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm look, uh, the only thing is maybe that it's a little bit thin when when things uh, might happen. Right. Um, but that was always a little bit uh, the consequence of uh, if you bring more quality with a budget that that uh, the budget for the strengths that are there, mm. and. Uh, you either go for quantity or if you want to get better, you need to go for quality. Right. So that sometimes it goes at the cost of uh, right. uh, the number. But but I think we have uh, actually a bigger group of players that are ready to play straight away. 
Right. So now, all in all, I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm very happy. I have a lot of um, faith in in this group of uh, in, in this group of boys. Right. And um, <clears throat> if if, um, if they start um, growing the same belief in themselves and each other, and that's of course where we uh, where you have the preseason for right. and start believing in what we do, and then I think they are capable of um, of um, being a very exciting uh, team, exciting to watch, and, and definitely in the end we want to entertain people, but football in the end is being played to win. Right, so, 100%. Um, uh, we want to do both, and I'm, uh, I'm confident that I'm capable of doing that. Very good, very good. So we got Yase um, here saying, PDR, Mr. Peter is a legend. Excited to have him on board this season. Um, Yasir is one of the um, esports uh, guys head for. Honcho. Yeah, sorry, head honcho, head honcho for Belisic Khalsa. Uh, big ups to you, Yasir. Nice to, nice to have you again. Um, John, again, I hope Belisic Khalsa FC will be top four this season. Why top four? Let's go. Top three or top two? Uh, let's just do. Qualify for that, is that ACL, yeah? Asian Champions League. Uh, uh, no, no pressure, Peter, no pressure. Um, so, Michael, we have Michael here. We have seen what Ballester did in return games. Uh, so we did what Ballester did in return games with Sailors at Topayo Stadium, even with their stars. Do we expect every team, including Tampines, Alberex, etc., will have a tough time when they enter the Tigers' den? So I, we will not be playing at Topayo Stadium. Yeah. Uh, we will be actually at Bishan Stadium uh, for the upcoming season. So, but I think the question is, uh, the question is, you know, he was asking if Ballester, what Ballester did to Sailors at, at home. Um, so, does, do we expect like every team, including the big team, Tampines and Elbrex, will have a tough time facing the Tigers at home? Away, probably better than we did at home. Right. Oh, I remember that game. And, and that was a good people, game. Um, some people uh, say to me that um, that the that the uh, the field in Tao Paido is a uh, is an advantage for us. Uh, I completely disagree. In the way we play, it's not an advantage for us. Right. So uh, the only advantage is that we sometimes train on that too. But in the way we play, it doesn't really suit us. Right. Uh, because it's not the best pitch, as everybody knows. So um, it was actually a tough place to come. When people like here at Topayo Stadium, they yeah, were like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah." The <laughs> and, I, and they know that I'm not going to compromise. Yes, it. yes, so, yes. Uh, yeah, that means that you sometimes get in, in awkward situations. Right. Uh, but yeah, um, they, people will not see a team that's, that, that starts clearing balls to the uh, right uh, over over the stands, over to the other side of the park, and see if we can pick up the scraps from Jumbo. That's not going to happen, and uh, that means that um, um, yeah, this field has not always been helpful. We we still wanted to play out, but we did it a little bit different than uh, than, than probably uh, before. So, but from what I heard, Bishan Stadium uh, they got pretty well maintained um, grass pitch. I think it's more FIFA grade. Um, so, can we look forward to um, you know more free flowing football from Belisic Khalsa now? Compared to you know, I think it was pretty tough playing free flowing football at Topayo Stadium given the pitch. Yeah, but, but even here we have done that at times. But yeah, it is yeah. extremely difficult. Right. I mean, uh, 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 Bishan is, is uh, obviously much more suitable to, to do that. And, uh, I'm right. Looking forward to that. I've right. seen some. I haven't been there. I plan to go there next couple of days. Right. But I've seen some pictures because I think uh, LCS and Tajupan. Yeah. Right there. I, some, some I think it's not too far from here. I think it's like about 10, yeah, 10 minutes, yeah, 10, 15 we'll minutes. Probably go with the yeah. staff. Right. So obviously, we need to look at the yeah. accommodation that we have on game day there as well. And uh, uh, yeah, well, the pictures I've seen from the pits it looks uh, it looks uh, it looks great. And, uh, and the last time I was there, I think was with uh, um, with um, yeah, well, <laughs> 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 yeah first time uh, we, that, that was the first time we met. Uh, yeah, that was during the Suzuki, Suzuki Cup, Cup yeah. Field, about good. two years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, field was good, yeah. Result wasn't good, but field was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yes, okay, moving on some questions. So we've got a lot of questions coming in. Mohammad Farihin, thank you for your question. What kind of football philosophy will you be implementing for the Tigers this season? Philosophy. 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 Yeah, but um, it's, it's always um, nice when you hear that because people sometimes, and I don't want to go too technical, but they sometimes <laughs> make, make a mistake to uh, confuse a formation with a philosophy. Right. So, um, so if they say, "Oh, Peter's from Holland, so his philosophy must be four-three-three," no, my philosophy is that uh, if you want to win games, you need to dominate on the ball. Right. You can only score if you have the ball. But in saying that, at senior level, you can also get results by sitting back right. on the counter, absorb pressure, and, and on the counter. It's yeah. something I personally um, doesn't suit my beliefs, but they can get you results. Yeah. Um, I, I like to play uh, possession-based football, and that is not keeping the ball for the sake of it. Because right. at the end, PTI, you have to do something with the ball. Well, yeah. yeah. We want to play forward and create opportunities, right. and, uh, and, and in the end, to create chances, you need to uh, you need to be on the ball. And that also means, if that's your your philosophy when you have the ball, it also means when you don't have it that you want to win it back quickly. Right. That means we cannot sit off. We need to defend high as a block mm -hmm. uh, to win the ball back. It also means in transition moments um, that we want to win it back as quickly as possible. Right. Uh, so we want to be dominant on the ball and play possession-based football. Can I check with you something? I read somewhere, I think it was a Sean Dyke video on Facebook that I watched this morning. He, he said that pressing is the new passing now. Is that true? Is that something you agree with? Pressing uh, is the new passing. It is a little bit of a, of a, of a password pressing, but uh, yeah. I think you need to, then you need to have a good definition of what exactly pressing is. And, right. And, and because a lot of teams do that uh, differently. I mean, right. uh, Liverpool does it a lot different than um, than let's say uh, even Man City. Right. Um, and we have done it even differently in games already. Um, um, and um, I think the most important thing about pressing is that it has to be done collective otherwise mm -hmm. and you need to be compact and that's why pressing and, and do that with 11 players is so hard. Right, 100%, 100%. Okay, moving on to, to Ras. Ras is going to get this uh, question. Oh. Okay, so Lingus is asking, lastly, podcasts like this gets you involved with fans and we are able to share our thoughts and also understand your plans better. Will you be engaging in podcasts more often? Time permits. Also, has this helped you? Thanks for answering my questions. Impressive work so far. Peter. So will you be involved with uh, um, Yeah, I mean... Um, more media, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think... <laughs> yeah, it, it, this sounds very simple, but it's really how I am as a coach and probably as a person. I think football is played for the fans. That also means... That, that also relates to the way I want to play. I I want to play entertaining football. There's people who uh, who buy a ticket, so uh, and I think Johan Cruyff uh, sometimes said, you know, um, playing just for a result uh, is um, boring, mm -hmm. but playing just to play well and not get results is pointless. Right. So um, I want to entertain, and that also means that whether it's me or my players. Um, or anybody else from the club, if there is an opportunity to uh, to engage with fans, um, we should jump on that. Um, that's why we all are able to do what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And enjoy it. Yes, yes, and, and football is for the fans, right? I mean, that's, that's why I say football is always for the fans. Yep. That's why we do it as well, you know. That's why we, we go out and this for the fans. Yep. So John Tan is saying happy to see so many Chinese players now in BKFC. Okay. Okay. Multiracial guys. John Tan again. I love Madhu throw in. Is that a tactic from the Tigers? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> he just picks the ball up and he just launches. Yeah, and um, um, yeah, I try to stop him every now and then. But he and he and he is back actually. He's got the next comment. We should have him on every week. So. Think, yeah, think does, nicely. He, he tries to make up for his first remark. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, Peter, on to the preseason. I'd just like to know, Peter, were you involved in selecting the opponents that 
Belastia were playing in preseason. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So and each of them brought different tests to Belastia, or is that the criteria of yeah. choosing the yeah. opponents? Um, obviously, um, you want a uh, you want a little bit of a build up in 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 the strength of your opponents. Uh, I did. I I, I never want to play a friendly in the first two weeks. And then the first couple of friendlies, uh, I never play one player more than 45 minutes, and then slowly okay. build up. Uh, in our last, in our last game, I think we had the first time players playing 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, not everybody, obviously. So it's a bit of getting game fitness and match fitness. So match fitness and physical fitness for the players. Yeah, I and mean, after two weeks, after four or five weeks doing nothing, and then start. Um, training again there's no way that you're ready to play for 90 minutes so mm. so that's where you get injuries that's why you uh, and for me keeping the players fit uh, is as important as getting better mm. because and in the end if you want to win games you also need to have your best players on the park yeah for sure you've you've already played three preseason matches so far one against tampanis yeah. tampanis rovers here and then you played slango two and atm so okay. It was a little bit different. We really treat that as a uh, training, uh, training match. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and from both, we also mm. knew which players we 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 play because we spoke before that we don't end up in a situation where we feel maybe our best group of players against. Um, so we knew exactly what was going to happen in that game. Okay. So and let's just compare the three teams that you've played so far: Tampani, Slango Two, and ATM FC. How different are they in terms of their playing style or their philosophy? Uh, quite similar, actually. Quite similar? Yeah, mm -hmm. quite similar. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of people know um, the way Gavin, uh, likes, Gavin likes to play with uh, the Tampanese. I don't need to speak about that. Um, Selam Gore has a completely new setup with Tan Chen Ho. Yep. Technical director that comes from uh, uh, NFDP and uh, the mm -hmm. AMD, the National uh, Youth program, yeah. from youth program, mm. and also the head coach comes from there. Uh, exactly does, um, oh. and these three people have exactly or a very similar uh, philosophy. Uh, Tan Chin Hao in terms of senior football mm. that they develop in uh, exactly a, a similar uh, um, playing style, mm. uh, which is not too uh, far away from what we're trying to do. Mm. Uh, so it's a footballing team mm. with a lot of uh, talent in there guys that played uh, already uh, for a long time together mm. um, and then armed forces uh, is obviously a little bit older um, I wasn't sure really how to um, um, how to um, um, I, know, I know them from of course previously being in, in Malaysia yeah uh, but at that time the armed forces team was completely different you know I remember that time those days yeah, okay, they were getting to the finals right and, uh, and, uh, yeah okay but then you talk even before, because I was there in 2017, oh, okay. I played uh, Premier League. Mm. Uh, similar people are still involved, the technical mm. director is still there. Mm. Um, um, what I did know is that they um, they played GDT, the JDT2, um, which they won with 2-1. Mm. Um, they played the end of January against Barak, who plays in the Super League. Yeah. They lost 1-0 in the 90th minute or 95th minute. Mm. So uh, a decent uh, opponent, mm. um, but yeah, they got uh, a little bit unlucky that um, we played uh, extremely well in that game uh, over 90 minutes. And uh, yeah, and I've, I've read some some comments from people who sit in an armchair. And say, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that. I, yeah, but you know, I'm what? gearing I, up to that. <laughs> I actually don't want to entertain that because I've got asked that question a few times this week. But as soon as I respond to that. It might give that opinion credibility mm. or some value, mm. which it has not, because mm. I've always, or, or, always learned in school, but also from my mom, that if you have an opinion on something but you're not informed, um, it's but, pointless mm. uh, and it's actually disrespectful. Yeah, uh, and, and that's a little bit what uh, with what's happening. Uh, people have opinions they by seeing a score, also against uh, Langor, but what people don't know yeah. is that. Um, we, we played a few players out of position, and in the end, we ended actually the game with players that were younger, with a few that were younger than their players. So uh, there's a little bit more to these things. And but if you ask me, 
my opinion on the game, I thought Salem God, we played the first 30, 35 minutes okay, we controlled. Um, and after that, I think uh, we made a lot of substitution and we, 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 uh, we lost the game. We still should have won it by chances, by the way, mm. uh, but we didn't. And um, in armed forces, what we did very well is that we, it was only 2 0 in half time. We played well, but we get, uh, and then we started the second half, in my opinion, very bad. And I'm thinking, okay, this is interesting uh, how, how they're not going to deal with that because mm. in the past, we were not capable of uh, getting out of that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it started clicking. We kept the ball. We, they, we, um, we didn't force a, a pass forward. We made them run and chase us. And in the last 15 minutes, we found the gap uh, four or five times. Uh, and, and we were patient enough to only play forward when it was really on. And, uh, and, and we, we split their defense four or five times. I think mm -hmm. even Roya and other two opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. and, and that that last 30 minutes is probably the best I've seen them in terms of uh, composure and decision making. Okay. So John is back again. He's saying, can we have Madhu in the next podcast? We'll have him soon for sure. He's in our sh in our minds, and here he's making himself known as well. So for sure, Madhu is much in our thoughts. Michael Ling is asking uh, Peter, how are the players' fitness building up so far? Uh, I think we we get uh, fitter uh, day by day. Um, I think fitness is being built gradually these days. When I was young, um, it was built like uh, you know you run into the, the woods till you, and if you if you not if you don't feel your hamstrings the next morning, you think you haven't done enough. Half the squad was injured in the first game started. <laughs> so these things um, these things go a little bit different now. Um, Maybe and, take care of the players. Well, you know, they're, they're, you want them fit at the first game. But they need to be available too. Yeah. And too. in the end, if we are not at 100% fitness in the first game, I don't care. Because if we are, but I have six players in there mm. that have a big impact on the quality of the squad, we also not, might, might not get a result. So yeah. even during the season, fitness is built gradually. And you need to make sure you're fit and fresh when it matters. 100%. Mm. Okay, this is another funny one, Madhu. Even Indra is getting fitter. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's evergreen. He's evergreen. He's evergreen. It's always fit. Yeah, but, but okay. Now okay. I'm going to tell you where this is coming from. Okay. We played a game of football tennis and I played with Indra. Okay. And he was sore for three days. Indra? Oh, yeah, he was sore Indra? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if he uh, appreciates me telling this. <laughs> yeah, he, he was struggling the next couple of days. So, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's revelations we know him we, 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 we know him in singapore as the guy who scored against manchester united right i saw the footage yeah. you saw the footage massa made sure that everybody saw uh, not the footage but more the cheering after the, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> apparently apparently i think the united players got really pissed after that like the way they celebrated yeah, and then... i can imagine that yeah. <laughs> uh, roy Keane especially i heard got really really <laughs> upset he yeah was, was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you in the dressing room <laughs> Um, what was the score? 8-1 to eight Manchester one. United. And he's got the, the one. one. Yeah. yeah. What, what was the score then? 1-1. 1-1. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, how do you say that? Um, fair enough. That's a moment to uh, yeah. embrace, to right? Yeah. yeah, okay. And so how far ahead is the team now after the preseason in Malaysia? And I'm sure, you know, the team has come together as well from the, a trip like that. Yeah, look... Um, there is a reason that um, I, I very much appreciate the support of the club in terms of uh, of a camp because um, yeah you, you get uh, a lot of new players in and um, and there's no better way to to get to know them if you can observe them and, and uh, deal with them and, and interact with them uh, not just for a couple of hours on training yeah. but also uh, in different circumstances so uh, and and. Obviously, new for new players to 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 gel and to settle, uh, it's ideal too. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I'm I'm very happy with um, with the week we just had. Yeah. So outside of football, mm -hmm. what else happened in KL uh, that you can share here? Yeah. That's PG thirteen. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, what do you mean outside of football? 
uh, you know, uh, night activities, um, bonding sessions, um, games. Oh no, yeah, we um, we did um, obviously um, our uh, dinners at seven or eight, and then uh, ten thirty to bed, of course. Mm. Yeah. Very strict. Very strict. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nobody, not, nobody not, broke, not, the, broke the curfew. It's <laughs> no, no. After the last game, they uh, they obviously. Uh, I was happy with the week, so I said, look, um, we'll have dinner, uh, but not together. You can go in groups, or you can go as a group yourself. And uh, and uh, I think you deserve a bit of, of free time when, uh, without me uh, breathing in your neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a question for you from Michael Ling. Peter, what do you think will be required for the team to maintain the level of consistency you expect? Um... <clears throat> Well, I, 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 uh, I think the most important thing is that um, that they first realize uh, realize what they are capable of, which what they have shown in patches of games, but never over ninety minutes mm. yet, in my opinion. Um, but it shows you what they are capable of, and, and I think uh, they see that now as well in, in preseason with uh, the added value of, of other players. And, and if they now as a group and individually uh, make sure that they don't get complacent, that they don't think that things are getting handed out, you need to go out and take them, that you need to work for them, that it sometimes means you have to hurt yourself, that it sometimes means that you need to learn to be uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable. If, if you want to achieve stuff, you need to be able to challenge each other and challenge me. Um, if, if we can uh, can reach that and, and they understand that that is the way to get better um, I'm for sure I'm already sure that it will help a lot to get more consistent and to make sure that there is less of a gap between being good mm -hmm. and being not so good rather than here but more here um, I think that's going to help and obviously what, what helps if you if you do things that you believe in and it goes and it comes with an outcome then it means you're going to start uh, trusting what you do my problem in the beginning was that i do think that players understood what i want they believed in what i want but if you then do not get the result it becomes a massive uh, challenge for a coach so obviously the results will, 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 will help um, only playing well, and at the end of the, the game, the coach or the team of the opponents says, well, you play well, thanks for the points. At some point, that's not going to happen. So, football, and um, senior professional football, is, is all about results. Mm -hmm. um, and we need them to make sure that um, we keep on trusting the process, too. Okay. I'm confident that, um, that we are more capable and of doing that than, than uh, last year. Okay, so Michael again, Indra was a great coach signing. We could see the coaching impact he made on Rio. This is Rio from Tanjung Paga. Rio, yeah. yeah. Not Rio, right? Yeah, no, not Rio, the, other, the other guy, Rio. Um, yeah. Okay, John Tan is asking when will this year match kit out on sale? I, I know when's the launch, but I don't know if I can say it or not, can I? No, I cannot. Okay, I cannot say it, but I know when's the launch. It's coming soon. But when it'll be out for sale, probably on the first match day, probably. Stay tuned on the, the social media page. Yeah, stay tuned on Belsi Kalsa's social media page for further updates. Lingesh is asking also, I don't really know how to put this as a question, but from us fans, how do you want us to help out with the team? Maybe less ranting, shouting at games or something? Fans to first of all, fans to attend and matches and watch them. Um, yeah, I mean, um, every 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 player. Um, uh, yeah, no, I can't speak for every player, but I know from from my days that um, uh, the more the better. I mean, in the end, you play football for fans, and uh, that motivates. And uh, um, so yeah what can we do let's of course make sure that we fill uh, that we fill the stands and then and it, it, i think renting and renting is that negative less yeah, renting renting uh, you, 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 you should cheer yeah. yeah but you know what it's all about renting. renting if we play bad uh, that that that's also good 
I remember this is this is going to be very very hard to translate literally, but when we played and the club I played for in the first 15 minutes it was not good. What's the club's name? Then then uh, Essek Kambu. Okay. And then the whole stadium when they they play in the highest league, mm. but I think they are rock bottom at the moment mm. in the in the Eredivisie. Eredivisie. Uh, mm. If if we didn't play well in the first 15 minutes, the whole stadium uh, would uh, sing a song and literally. That would be um, pocket fillers. Like, oh, you earn the money easy, yeah. and, and this is what we. Uh. But for me, it was uh, some players didn't like that, and I'm not saying I liked it, but for me, it was something. Okay, it matters. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and it helps if you do what you do, and it matters to people. Mm. Um, I think it, that makes it relevant, right? Yeah. Uh, so. Um, supporters make us relevant to come back to the same thing, and uh, uh, again, again, that's what we do it for. So the more, uh, the more, the better. I'm sure uh, Daniel Go will be flying down the <laughs> line, uh, if, if there's more people shouting his name. Yeah, uh, wearing his jersey, wearing jersey. you know, yeah. showing his jersey in the stadium. Daniel, Daniel. Daniel does have a good uh, fan following. Yep, yep, from his mates. Yep. And uh, I think on the topic of fans, I think we got to say that the last match we watched Ballester play in against Albirex at Jalan Besar Stadium, they received really good support. Right. You know, fantastic support. You know, normally when it comes to Topayu Stadium, just one Abang Saleh would be, you know, really vocal. But in that game in Jalan Besar, I think there were more than one. And, you know, everyone's really cheering Ballester on. I think that was really nice. And I hope this season at, Bel- at Bishan Stadium, you'll get the same kind of support. Ah, John is saying, I love Daniel too. Tricky and fast winger. Okay, so for sure, John's a member of the Daniel Go fan club. Yeah. yeah. yeah? So, uh, John, if anyone wants to join the Daniel Go fan club, please let us know how they can join so we can uh, uh, hook up fellow Daniel Go fans with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter, last words for the fans before the season starts. Now look, um, I'm probably going to repeat myself, but um, um, we're excited. Uh, not only me, I think everybody around the club and, and, and the players excited to, to start and uh, and, and hopefully, um, no, not hopefully, because that would mean that I might not believe in it. Mm. Uh, I'm sure we will make them proud this year. Yep, we're hoping to. We're also excited based on what we've seen last season as well and uh, new signings we've got. I think, you know, we're quietly confident we good. We could be in for a very good season. So, Peter, please do us a good job. <laughs> do us <Yeah>. proud. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's me, Ras, signing out. Kel? Yeah, it's me, Kelvin, signing out with Peter here. And uh, like what Ras said, really, really um, excited for the season to start. And for all the fans there watching, um, remember, we are playing at... The Tigers are now playing at Bishan Stadium. So, do not come down to Topayo Stadium. There won't be any games. Uh, so, come down to Bishan Stadium. Yeah, you see... Uh, is it still open, Topayo Stadium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's still open, but no one's going to play. You can come and, you know, uh, have fun here. But Bishan Stadium, of course. And then, uh, we look forward to having all the supporters at the stadium. Uh, I think the first game is coming up real soon, in two weeks' time. And uh, yeah, if you do see us or if you have any suggestions, do reach out to Balestier social media page or you can reach out to us, Backpass, uh, with Ra's social media page and we'll be happy to um, help you with that and we'll be happy to, you know, guide you on how to get tickets or merchandise or whatsoever. You can reach out to us always uh, here for defense. We'll be happy um, to see John Tan. We'll be happy to see John Tan and Michael Link and of course, Lingesh, if you have time, uh, that would be great. So thank you, Peter. Thank you. I know uh, it's... it's, it's uh, almost an hour but uh thank you guys for tuning in uh madhu has uh, some okay great stuff madhu always a pleasure looking forward to having you on our show and uh, so yeah so good night take care and uh, all the best